Hey guys, this is Stark here again. I uh, want to give you a heads up view of uh, the inside of a relay and really what it does. So, trying to be quick about this. Inside this cube relay, that's what we call them. These are little cubes. It looks like a cube. It's nice and clear so that you can see what's going on inside of it. So, uh, you might remember if I told you before, if I energize this coil inside, well, we learned about this yesterday. Uh, magnetic induction is actually used in our field to for many different things. And this is basically a coil of wire wrapped around an, an iron core. So when we put current through this wire, uh, we increase the magnetic field because we have a lot of turns on this, but we also create magnetism. And on top of this coil, you might not be able to really see on top, but you'll have to trust me. There's two pieces of metal and right now there's a gap between those pieces of metal and you could probably see that gap when i energize this coil i'm a, i'm creating enough magnetism to pull this plunger to pull this contact point up against the solenoid if you will the coil and when i do that it changes the position of these contacts that are underneath now these contacts that are underneath we refer to them as uh, normally open, normally closed, and common. And each relay has at least two sets of those contacts, one on one side and one on the other. It's got a set of normally open and normally closed here, and on the other side it's got the same thing. They're independent from each other too. So if this open decides to close, it elect it's electrically isolated from the other side. Uh, so how that works is if I press the start button, which is the lab that uh, we did yesterday, except we're now we're energizing a coil instead of a light. If I press this start button and hold it, you'll see two things happen. One, you'll see an indicator light come on this coil, this relay saying the coil is energized. And I have to keep my finger on it for now because I have not built a holding circuit yet. If I release it, the coil is de-energized. Now if I go back and look at the inside of the relay is what's happening in here. Look at this part down here. So when I hit the start button you'll see a little movement. So what's happening is this white wire is actually connected to my common terminal. The common terminal is actually these screws on the lower base. It actually goes common, normally open, normally closed. There's three screws on this side of the relay, an identical setup on the other side. So if I had a circuit tied onto this anywhere on this side, when I energize the coil, the position of the circuit changes. I could represent that by uh, showing you a drawing. It's a very simplified drawing, but it's, it's effective. If I bring this over here, what's actually going on inside this relay is there's a common terminal, and this is the wiring diagram, really, what's inside the relay. If I had power hooked up to this common, that power is actually available for both sides of this circuit. And if I redraw it, you'll see what I mean. Because right now, I, I've already been manipulating this drawing. So if I took this power source, if I took this diagram and redrew it, right out of the box, it would look something like this. And I would just have a line here, and I would put C or common. All relays have common, normally open, normally closed. So what you do with this common is entirely up to you as far as how it works with your diagram, but usually there's power that's put here, usually. And then because this is common, it's in common with this normally open, and this normally closed contact. So, you know, we, we use these contacts a lot with relays, and you have to understand that this symbol is normally closed, this one's normally open. Maybe on a different diagram, you'd see it something like this. That's something like that. This would be normally open, this would be normally closed. And how these are labeled is very important to how the circuit works. So, if I put power here, right now, 
the, the electrons would be sitting here and they'd go nowhere because this is an open gap. Whereas on the normally closed side, these electrons would travel through this closed contact and likely do something. And let's just pretend there's a light hooked up here. If there was a light bulb hooked up to that contact, this light would be on so long as the coil wasn't energized. And this light would be off so long as the coil is not energized because that's an open contact. But when I put power to it, something cool happens. So take a look at the contacts again. They change. So how I know that that's true is if I put my meter on ohms and if I take my two leads and if I went across common and normally open, right now this is common, this is normally open, this is normally closed. Normally open means that I'm not going to hear a beep on my meter. If I did this with my meter by itself, you could hear the meter beeping. The meter's telling you there's a short circuit between these two wires or there's a connection. So right now, normally open, there should be no connection. But when I hit the start button, way over here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over here and hit the start button because that circuit's wired in. I'll see the coil get energized, but then I'll also hear uh, the meter beep. So right now, I energize the coil and I just told a different circuit, maybe there's something else tied on to here, to go on. So maybe that light bulb is on. If there was something tied on to normally closed, it would be on right now before the coil because it's normally closed out of the box. But if I hit and energize the coil, that circuit's going to die. So we just close, we, we open that circuit and took power away from that, whatever was tied onto it. And you'll see how these contacts become very important to relay function. It does the same thing on the other side. This is independent. So if I had another different circuit hooked up over here, if I hit the button, same result. Normally open becomes normally closed. And normally closed becomes normally open. Only when I do something to energize that coil will these contacts change position. So once again, it's kind of important to see the inside of this because when you get a close-up view, you're really focusing on this little armature in here is closing. Every time I energize the coil, I'm changing positions of a different circuit or another part of the ladder rung somewhere else. So let's put this into perspective of a real circuit. Well, here, let me just fictitiously draw uh, any kind of fake circuit so that you can kind of see what's going on here. Maybe I have a start button that goes to a coil. And off of this rung, I have an open. And we'll call this a green light. We'll put a G in there for green. And the same thing, I come off this rung, I got a close contact over to a red light. And the thing about relays is, as soon as you see the relay's name, any contacts that are associated with that relay need the same name. So, you know, these contacts, I'm gonna call them C. C. So I know that these contacts belong to that relay. When you've got multiple relays in a circuit, you're gonna have different names and different designations. So to simplify this, if I press this start button and hold it, this becomes energized. And what's going to happen is this is going to close and this is going to open. In other words, and I can't really erase that. I probably should have done it with a dry erase. But this will close, allowing the green light to come on. This will open, taking away the red light. So it's, this is very basic. But understand when I energize a relay, whatever contact positions they were in, they're going to change to their opposite state. And this relay being called C, well, it controls this contact 
and this contact all by the press of one button and I could I could increase this by another set of contacts of each so in reality uh, by me pressing this button and energizing this coil four different things could happen or more depending on how you wire it so that would kind of be the diagram for that and we're, we're looking at it right in real time we're seeing this action happen but once again in order for this to do anything you need wires hooked up to these terminals so yesterday video yesterday's video you heard me talking about you're going point to point we're actually going from screw to screw whatever you got to tie these wires in somehow so back to this if I was to dissect this drawing right now the only thing that's wired up to this base is this the start to the coil and I'll show you that by looking at this so if we took our drawing the first wire on that drawing goes to the first screw of the start button and that was this drawing here and if we take a look at this drawing right now we have a first wire from the source going to the first screw wire from my 24 volt source is red it leaves the source comes into the first screw of the start button there's a second screw of the start button that doesn't do anything until I press it but when I do press this button I close these contacts I make this circuit jump to here through the button then those electrons leave this red wire and come over to 13 on this base that's this from this screw to 13 so that wire is done and then on the opposite side of the coil we need a neutral going home which is this blue wire represented here that blue wire then comes back to my source and when I put my cover on only when I put my cover on can I press this button to let those electrons flow on that red get to the coil go through that coil come back up on the blue and then go back to their source so I have a complete circuit that's kind of it for that type of relay there will be more instruction on this relay in the, in the coming videos but for now hopefully you see that these internal mechanics have to move and the only thing that's making them move is you energizing that little uh, coil which is basically an inductor which is what you learned yesterday when I energize or put current through this little wire that's got a lot of windings if I actually unwound it it's probably several probably 10 to 20 30 feet long of just wire around that coil small wire but when I put current through that wire one it creates a magnetic field the more windings the more turns I have around that that core the higher the magnetic field the higher the magnetic field the stronger my magnetism is and this one's only strong enough designed strong enough to pull this plunger down so that it can change state from normally open to normally closed and you can really see that gap closing and the purpose of that is so that we can change these contact positions and control the circuits that leave the relay so hopefully you got something out of that and i'll see you at the next video